Now I want to talk about one of the most important services in AWS that is called IAM. IAM stands for Identity and Access Management. <clears throat> okay, so IAM is a service that securely controls access to AWS resources. So when you create your AWS account, you create it using your email ID, okay, which gives you root access, or we can say you get into God mode. That is, you can do anything in that account with the root credentials. You can create any resource or you can delete resources. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to create an AWS account in a separate video. Okay. Let's talk about the various components of IAM that you should understand. So the components of IAM are users, groups, policies, and roles. Okay. So we'll learn it one by one. So what is a user? Okay, so when someone joins a company, okay, it can be any company and they need to access the company's AWS accounts. So for example, I join a company as a DevOps engineer, I'm hired there and now I need to access AWS account of that company. Okay, so then that user, if, if, if that user uh, has to access the AWS account, okay, we need to create a user in AWS using the IAM service for that user. Okay. So this user term in IAM is used to provide access to real people, the employees of your company. Okay. To access AWS accounts and resources within the accounts. Okay. Just one more thing. When we talk about IAM access to AWS account, there are two things that you should understand. The first term is authentication. Authentication means who can access the account. Okay, who all can access? So those users are called authenticated users. And once someone has logged into the AWS account, within the account, we have multiple services. Okay, and those multiple services can have read roles and write roles. So within the account, what you can access as an IAM user, so that is controlled by authorization. So this is the difference between authentication and authorization. So authentication means who all can access the AWS account and within the AWS account, okay, what you can access and in, and in what level of access, read or write access. So that is controlled by authorization. Remember these two terms. Sometimes these are asked in the interviews as well. All right. So, um, so this is about AWS uh, IAM user in a nutshell. Okay. So, <clears throat> Uh, but one more thing, these users, uh, uh, when you create an IAM user, okay, in AWS IAM service, so by default, that user will not have any permissions attached. Okay. I mean, if you just, just uh, keep on hitting next to create the user, I'm going to show you to you as well. Okay. In a, in a, uh, in a while on uh, AWS, how to create a user and uh, I mean, how to do. Uh, I mean, everything within IAM service. Okay. But uh, just understand that user, when you create a user, so by default, the user will not have any access. Why? Because all the permissions that are given to the users are given by an another uh, resource in AWS, which is called policies. This policies. So policies is a document which is written in JSON format in AWS and it controls the permissions of all the services within AWS account. Okay. Remember this, that the users cannot do anything on their own. They, uh, the policies are attached to these users so that they can do anything within the account. So policies control the permissions of users, you can say. All right. And the, uh, the type of permission that they control, it can be read access or write access to AWS services. Okay, so we can control all that using these policies. Okay, and as I mentioned, the policies are written in JSON format. Okay, and uh, yeah, so we just covered users and, and policies and now, uh, uh, now let's talk about groups. So what are groups? So groups is just group of users. We use groups 
when we want to give same permissions to multiple people of the same team okay so rather than attaching same permissions to users through a policies multiple times we can create a group assign the permission policies to groups and then add all the users of the same team to the same group in this way what will happen the users will inherit all the permissions from the groups itself we don't have to assign the permissions individually to individual users okay so uh, so this is a very important uh, uh, this question that can be asked in the interviews that how do you assign permissions to 100 users using im service in aws so you can say that generally what we do we create uh, this user group okay and then we add all the users to group and whatever permissions we have to attach we just attach to the group once and then all all the permissions will be uh, i mean flowing to the users as well through groups okay when they attach to that same group all right so this is about group and as i mentioned i'm going to show you a demo of everything okay in, in a while i just want to make you understand the theoretical part first okay so this is about uh, the groups now let's talk about roles okay so an iam role is similar to an iam user in that it also has the permission policies that determine uh, i mean what that uh, i mean uh, what that role can do inside an AWS account and cannot do in the AWS account. Okay, so all that is controlled by policies. So users also use policies and roles also use policies. Okay, however, instead of being uniquely associated with one person, okay, in, in, in terms of users, so the users are used for a person who has to access something in AWS account. A role is intended to be assumed by anyone who needs it. So when you create an IAM user, you get a username and password to log in. Okay. And that, that uh, username and password is, is, uh, I mean, are, are the long term credentials. Okay. Those are called the long term credentials, but with a role, you get a temporary credentials that are changed dynamically. So roles are actually more secure than users. Okay. Remember this part as well. So, uh, I mean, I'm going to show you a demo, which will, I mean, clear the doubts of I mean, what is the difference between a user, a role and role? Okay. Uh, but just understand that whenever you are I mean, given a situation where you have to choose between users and roles, so roles are always more secure to users. Okay. The reason being roles are governed by temporary security credentials that are rotated uh, uh, dynamically. Okay. But in case of users, you get a username and password, which is there for the long term. Okay, so those credentials won't change until you change it manually. So this is the difference between users and roles. All right. Now, uh, one of the real world IAM scenario that you will see when you join any organization who has their applications on, uh, I mean, on, on a cloud platform, especially AWS. So let me just, I mean, uh, just walk you through this real world example. So suppose there's a company called ABC. Okay. This company has 50 employees. Okay. 10 developers, 10 testers, 20 cloud engineers and 10 DevOps engineers. Okay. And this company ABC has 10 websites that they have hosted on AWS. So they have created their own AWS accounts and in these accounts. So for example, let's just take example of one AWS account to keep things simple. This company has created one AWS account. In that AWS account, they have hosted their uh, 10 websites. Okay. And how they have hosted these, these websites, they have used these services, A, B, C, D, E. Okay. This is because in AWS, we have uh, multiple ways to deploy an application. Okay. It is up to us. I mean, which service we want to use depending on our requirement and use case. So in this example, so let's assume that we have 10 websites of this company that they have hosted on AWS and they are using these five services, service A, service B, service C, service D, service E. Now, these 50 employees have to access this AWS account, okay, in which they have hosted their production websites. So, and this is the level of access that we are expecting them to have. So 
the developers should only be able to access services A and B and they should be able to have access, uh, read and write access to these two services. Okay, similarly for tester, they should be able to access only A, B, C, D service. So out, out of these, uh, these five services, the testers should be able to access only A, B, C, D service. In case of developers, they should be ex uh, I mean, able to access only A and B service. Okay, and for testers, they should be able to read, I mean, uh, they should have read access to A and B services and they should have write access to C and D services. Okay, similarly for, for, for cloud engineers and DevOps engineers, I mean, we have some particular type of access that we want. Okay, so how to control this granular level of access to an AWS account of, a, of, of company's employees? So all that can be controlled using this IAM service. Okay, and this is the real world example when you join a company who, uh, I mean, who has their production applications on AWS and you have joined any, in, in, uh, I mean, any of the roles. I mean, uh, you can be a developer, you can be a tester, you can be a cloud engineer, you can be a DevOps engineer, or you can be in some other role. But when you join in and you have to be given the access, so that access will be uh, controlled by IAM service. Okay, and this is actually a real world scenario. Okay, so uh, when you join in uh, uh, I mean any, any, any company, so this is the type of access that you have to control. Okay, I mean, if you are given the responsibility to do so. Okay, so just remember this part. Okay, how the, uh, uh, the uh, I mean, access is, is, is given on AWS accounts to different employees of a company. All right, I hope this is clear. Once again, if you have any doubts, you can always just put it in the comment section and I'm going to answer all your queries. All right, next I want to talk about the IAM roles in a little bit more detail, okay? So actually these are the use cases of roles. I mean, when you will want to use roles, okay, in, uh, in AWS IAM. So let's take the example of this single AWS account now, right now. So suppose, <clears throat> suppose, uh, within an AWS account, there's a service called EC2. EC2 stand, stands for Elastic Compute Cloud. This is one of the most widely used services in AWS. And this service is used to create virtual machines. Okay, suppose this service has to upload some data to a storage service in AWS called S3. S3 stands for Simple Storage Service. This is one of the most widely used storage services in AWS. So in cases wherein this service has to interact with this service, okay, in this case, this EC2 instance has to upload some data to S3 bucket. In that case, you can use IAM roles to do so. Okay, and I'm going to show you a demo, a practical demo of this particular scenario, wherein this EC2 instance is trying to upload data to this S3 bucket using an IAM role. Okay, I'm going to show it to you. So just understand that when the, the, uh, uh, when one service in AWS account, okay, wants to talk to another service, in that case, you have to use IAM roles. So roles are used to uh, connect two services together as well. Okay, so I mean, these roles can be assumed by IAM users also. Okay, um, just remember this part also, the roles can be assumed by IAM users also. Just remember this line, okay? I'm I'm going to um, uh, I'm show you a practical in some other video, okay? About this. So uh, the roles are used to uh, uh, are used when one service in AWS account, okay, wants to talk to another service. You can use IAM roles. Then another scenario is if you have a mobile app, okay? This mobile app has to talk to some services in this AWS account. In that case also, you can create an IAM role. This is the most secured way of creating this type of access. So once again, you can use IAM roles to do that. Then if you have multiple AWS accounts and from this account, you want to talk to another account, then again, you can use IAM roles. Okay. Then one more thing, if you have a third party application or a third party resource that wants to access some of the services in one of your AWS accounts, in that case also, you can use IAM role. So you, if you see here, IAM role is a very important entity in AWS IAM, and this is actually more versatile, okay? Uh, I mean, more secure, and we have to try to use it as much as we can. All right, 
so this is all about the the theoretical part all right and now let's just uh, i mean go to our aws management console and see these things in practical so i am logged into my uh, aws account and uh, let me start with the region so on this screen so this is the default aws management console dashboard when you log in with your root root email id and password this is the first screen that you are going to see okay here if you see on on the on the top right hand corner where it is written n virginia it stands for uh, northern virginia and this is one of the aws regions okay if i i mean click on this drop down button here you can see the multiple aws regions okay so these are the multiple aws regions that i just spoke about which are part of aws's global cloud infrastructure okay so right now i am in uh, this this northern virginia region okay and this is the default region that you get when you log into your aws account and this is actually the region that you should use the most because whenever any new feature or service is launched is it is generally in this region that you will see uh, the service being launched so this region will have the most uh, what do you call uh, the newest features or services in aws account okay so by default you can i mean keep using this but if if you have some some preference of other other uh, region as well you can i mean use that also okay it's up to you but i i try to use this this northern virginia in in this aws account okay so this is the region and this is the region code okay so it is us east one is the region code for this region so similarly you have these multiple regions okay i mean why i'm saying this because some services in aws are regional okay let me show it to you if i click on ec2 and if i click on instances here so you can see uh, there are two instances right now okay one is in stop status one is in running status and if if you see the region is this northern virginia now if i change the region to some other region for example i change it to asia pacific mumbai so you won't see those two instances okay since ec2 is a regional service so that is why it is important to understand okay so since ec2 is a regional service the the instances that i created i created in this northern virginia region and i can only see those uh, instances in that region only so when i change the region the instances are not visible to me anymore so let's change it back to us east okay so uh, 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 this is the concept of a region and then the uh, availability zones so these are the availability zones us east 1a us east 1b okay so i'm going to talk about it uh, a lot more when i talk about ec2 services okay so uh, i just wanted to give you a very basic idea of what is a region and what is an availability zone in aws okay now let's start our iam practical so i'm going to head back to the iam service so if you have to if you have to search for any services in aws just go to this search box and type the name of the service like iam in this case and if you want to uh, just mark this service as favorite you can just click on this star button and then this service will be in your favorite section here so let's click on iam and on on the on the left hand side you will see those entities that we discussed so there are some other other things as well but you don't have to worry about anything as of now just try to understand those four components users user groups roles and policies for now okay so let's start with users so i'll click on users here and i can see there are uh, uh, no users right now okay so let's try to create our first user in iam so i'll click on create user here i'll put the username let's put it as dev1 okay developer1 and then i want this user to have access to our management console so this is called aws management console so i want this user to have access to this console here i just want to create an iam user so just ignore this this one for now and i'm going to choose i want to create an iam user okay so after i click on this option i i got two two radio buttons i have to choose the other one i want to create an iam user and then i want to auto generate a password okay 
so uh, i mean uh, i mean uh, uh, you can use your custom password as well but i am using this auto generate password here to generate to let uh, the service you know generate a password for me okay and then i am also going to check this option users must create a new password at next sign in recommended so that in, that a new user will have the option to change his or her password when they log in for the first time so i'll click on next and now if you see i mean we are getting options to add a user to a group but we don't have any groups yet or we can copy permissions or we can attach the the permission policies directly okay but we're not going to do that i just want to create this user without any permissions as i mentioned when you create the user without choosing any 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 options uh, then the user will not have any permissions okay but this user will have uh, this one permission because we i mean check that option of users will be able to change their password okay so these users will have the uh, the permission policy to change their password here so i'll just click on create user here and if i click on view user sorry <clears throat> so i mean when i click on this i mean uh, when i when i just hit this create user button i get this option so i get this console sign in url so this is the url which the i mean which this new user can use to log into aws management console okay and this is the username and this is the password which has been uh, generated by aws im service okay and if you want to just I mean, download these details you can just click on this download.csv file and these details will be downloaded to your account let's just download it to desktop maybe <clears throat> All right, and I'm going to open this. And now I'll try to log in with this new user. So I'll just copy this login URL, the sign in URL. And what I have to do is, since I'm already logged in to this browser with my root user credentials, either I have to use another uh, browser like Edge or some other browser, or I have to open an incognito window so i'll just open an incognito window so you see here i get this account id and this is the same account id of i mean this is the account id of my main account which i'm using as as root user you can verify that as well to check the account id just click on this stack applicate i mean the name of the user of your account and this is the account id okay extending with 0652 if i go back 0652 so this is the same aws account but within this account i have created one i am user okay the name of the the user is dev1 as you can see so just type dev1 here and copy the password which has been generated by aws so copy and paste it here and when i click on sign in i'll get the option to change this default password like this so let's type the old password and let's type a new password confirm password change so now i am logged in as the i am user and not the not the root user so generally i mean we would not use the root user until it is really required okay so root user is like i mean kept in the secure repository somewhere so in case so there are i mean uh, there are a few activities in the aws account that can only be done by the root user only for those those tasks will be using the root user ever else we will always be working with iam users mostly okay in this way we can secure our resources i mean we can ensure that uh there are no damages done to our resources okay and let's accept all the keys done done and right now if you remember i did not attach any permission to this user this user only had the permission to change their password so for example if i click on any of the services like if i click on ec2 here and check what all access this iam user has you will see some errors related to authorization so these are the type of errors that you will see because this user does not have any permissions in ec2 to access anything okay similarly if i type s3 
if I hit S3 here, once again I will see the errors related to permissions since this user does not have any permissions attached. Okay, so from here you can click on buckets and you will see the error. You don't have permission to list buckets. Okay, so right now this is a raw user with, with no permissions, just the permission is to change the password. Now head back to our, uh, let's head back to our root account and try to attach some permissions. I'll just cancel out of it. And this is my, it's slightly slower today. So let's click on the username and check what all permissions are there. So as you can see, there's only one permission attached. So to add any permissions to a user, okay, so you have to attach the policies, the permission policy that I spoke about. What you have to do is, you have to click on add permissions here and you can click on add permissions. And now, uh, since we do not have a group yet, okay, we will use this option, attach policies directly. So click on it and you will see some policies which are already there. So there are multiple types of policies in AWS. When you do not create any, any policies on your own, you still get AWS managed policies. So these are the policies that are given by AWS uh, to be ready to use. Okay, so if, if you don't want to create your own own, own policies, I mean, uh, and, you, uh, uh, and you want to use the AWS given policies, you can use AWS managed policies. Okay, so here, let's just try to add a policy to a user, Amazon S3 full access. So I want this user to have full access to S3 service in AWS. Okay, so this is one of the AWS managed services already given. So I'll just choose this service from here in the permission policies section, and I'm going to click on next, and then I'm going to click on add permissions. In this way, I have added S3 full access permissions to this user. So once it is added, we will just refresh the browser window of the user logged in screen. The permission is added, you can see it here. And if I head back to the user screen, okay, if, if I click on this refresh button, you can see it says no buckets, but I don't see that error because the users, uh, I mean, this user now has a full access to S3 service. Okay, so since there are no buckets, the user is still unable to see any bucket. So let's just create a bucket. Let me go to S3. So I'll go to S3 and uh, I'll try to create one bucket so that we can see if the IAM user is able to see that bucket, the new bucket. So we are on the default S3 dashboard and let's click on buckets and let's try to create a bucket. So I'm logged in as the root user the root uh, account and I'm trying to create a bucket here. Okay. So don't do anything in this. Just scroll to the very last. Just, just put the name. Let's write tech applicate and click on create bucket. This name should be, uh, this name should be unique. Okay. Uh, so uh, the names of the S3 buckets are uh, universal. That means no two names can be same. Okay, in 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 this service. So I mean, if, if if there's a name already existing with that name, you will get the error that the name already exists. So you have to choose a unique name for your bucket. Okay, so the bucket has been created. If I head back to IAM user screen and hit refresh, I can see the bucket now. So you the user has access to list buckets. Okay, has access to do anything within the bucket because we assigned full access to this user. So this is how the permissions are controlled on the most basic level at the at the most basic level. Okay, now let's try to go back to the IAM screen and I'm going to remove this permission. I'll just remove this, remove policy.
once this permission policy is removed, if I refresh the screen of the IAM user, he will again get the same error due to permission. If I head back, I can just, I'll just refresh and the user will see the error again. All right, so the permissions are taken away. So this is how you control the permission for an IAM user. Now let's talk about the groups. So uh, let's just try to create another user so that we can have two users that we can add to a user group. So I am going to create one more user. Let's name it as dev2, which means developer2. And again, I want this user to have access to AWS Management Console and I just want to create an IAM user. Auto generate a password. Users must create a new password at next sign in recommended. I'm going to choose this option and I'm going to create next. And I'm going to create next. And I'm going to just review the information and I'm going to hit create user. Another user is created and let's download the CSV file with information of this user as well. So I'll just download it on my desktop and uh, I'll just copy this console sign in URL and I'm going to log out from this earlier user. So I'll do sign out and I'm going to log in with second user dev2 so i've created two users dev1 and dev2 which are which means developer1 and developer2 and, uh, and these two users will be part of the developer user group so let's just paste the sign in url of the second user dev2 here and once again it will ask for username and password so username i know dev2 and let's copy the password from here So it's for dev2 and let's pass the let's paste the password for uh, dev2 user and again it's going to prompt me to change the password password changed all right now I head back to i am service once again Okay, and this time we will create a group. So let's go to user groups, create group, and you can name it anything, but I'm going to name this group as developer. Developer, and uh, I don't want to, okay, now, so here's the option. So, I mean, when you create the user group, you get the option to add users to the user group. Okay, so I want to add this and this user to user group. Okay. And then I get the option to attach permissions. So um, uh, 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 we'll attach the permissions a little later. So let's just add these two users to this user group and click on create user group. So now if you see, we have this user group called developer. If I click on this user group, you can see there are two users attached to it, but there are no uh, permissions attached to this user group. Okay. Now here on the other incognito window, I'm logged in as user two and I can see the user does not have access to S3 buckets yet. Since I did not attach any policy individually to that user or I do not have any permissions attached to the user group as well. So this user does not have any permissions apart from password change permission. Okay, so if I click on buckets, I can see the user does not have the permission. Now. Earlier, I attached the permission directly to the user. This time, I'm going to assign the permission to user group. So I'm in, in, in the developer user group and under permissions, I can click on add permissions, attach policies, and I can type S3 in the search box, and then I can choose Amazon S3 full access, AWS managed policy, and I can, get, I can click on attach policies. So this time I attach policies to the group and not to an individual user. The meaning of this is this this access or this permission will be given to uh, all the users of the group dev1 and dev2 okay so if i just go here and ref hit refresh i can see this user has now get the i mean has now got the access to see the buckets okay so this is how the access is controlled via a user group i hope the concept is clear okay even then if you have any doubts please put it in the comment section all right, so we just spoke about users, groups, and uh, let's talk about, okay, let's talk about policies a little bit. Okay, let me show you the, 
a policy how it looks so let's go to permissions and let's just click on this plus sign here so this is one of the aws managed policies so I'll, i'm going to click on plus sign to see how uh, this permission policy looks like so this is the json format okay uh, and, and you can see the option to i mean copy this policy you have the option to copy json so this is how it looks okay so this version will always remain the same i mean i haven't i mean uh, there are multiple versions to it but i mean we will try to use the latest version of the policies so just keep it as it is and under statement under statement there are three things effect action and resource effect means what type of effect you want to give to the identity who uses this uh, this policy so here i am saying allow so when I mean, you can have allow or you can have deny if you want to deny something then also you can use i mean you can create your own permissions policy and then you can attach to any user or a user group or a role okay so effect means i mean what effect you want to allow or deny i mean you want to allow or deny something okay so that is called effect action is if you want to allow then uh, what actions in 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 uh, a particular you want to allow or deny so in this case it is allow so i want to allow star permission star means all the permissions for s3 let me just zoom in a little bit so if you see here effect is allow action means what do you want to allow i want to allow all s3 actions all means star i can use this wild card to specify all the options for s3 service and then there's there's one more s3 object lambda star so the, this is uh, uh, I mean one more service for which i want to allow all the actions for this service and on what resource in this aws account do you want to allow this again i want to allow this service for all the resources means in this case it will be all the s3 buckets so the meaning of this is i want to allow these actions on these resources in this case i am specifying star which means all the resources all the actions of s3 i want to allow to anyone who uses this permission okay so this is this is the uh, basic example of a policy of an iam policy in aws all right uh, now let's talk about iam roles so let's head back to role section the, on the left hand side and and uh, you can see some roles already created by default by aws but we want to create our own role okay so let's create a role now here you have to choose the the trusted entity the meaning of this is who's going to assume this role or who's going to use this role either it can be an aws service or it can, in, can be an aws account if you remember from the diagram that you can use iam roles for cross account access or you can use uh, this web identity once again uh, this is for external uh, i mean apps okay uh, if, if they want to access something in in this account again you can create a role for that and then there are some other options as well which are which are for advanced users so you don't have to worry about that here what i want to do is i want to show you the example wherein this ec2 service is able to upload files to this s3 bucket okay so i mean uh, we already have this s3 bucket that we have created and i i already have an ec2 instance so i'm all, i'm i'm going to log into this ec2 instance and i'm going to show you how iam roles can help you upload some data from this ec2 instance to this s3 bucket okay so this will give you a very good idea of how roles are used and how they are different from users so let's go back to our aws management console and here i want to use an aws service with this role so if you see here allow aws services like ec2 lambda or others to perform actions in this account so here i want to use this role with, with ec2 service so this is the option that i have to choose then scroll down and uh, then then again from this service or use case you have to choose ec2 here okay this is the the commonly used options okay just choose ec2 and just click on next and then you have to choose the permission that you want to allow once again i want this role to have amazon s3 full access okay so as you can see here i can attach the permission policies to roles as well okay so 
this permission policies are attached to users the policies are attached to groups the policies are attached to roles as well okay so all the other three identities can use roles sorry uh, i mean can use policies so users can use policies the groups can use policies and roles also can use policies okay so i'm i want to attach amazon s3 full access to this role i'm going to hit next and i'm just i'll, I'll just uh, name this role as ec2 hyphen s3 role okay uh, the the name can be anything and then just uh, click on create role this is going to create your role which can be used by ec2 service to interact with s3 service okay <clears throat> amazon s3 full access just ignore this error okay so the role has been has been created now head uh, i'm going to head back to ec2 service and i'm going to check what all instances i have so here i have created one instance already okay i am going to log in to this instance so i'll click on connect i'll copy the example command i'll go to my mobax terminal i'm going to just hit paste and enter okay and i am going to accept the fingerprint yes now uh okay one thing that you have to take care of while doing this 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 demo that the instance that i've used i've used uh amazon linux instance okay so let me show it to you you can click on uh, launch instances you can click on uh, launch instances okay and when you are trying to do this practical try to use this ami which is amazon linux okay so i mean when we did our linux for devops series we used the red hat instance but for this demo try to use amazon linux ami okay so just choose this option and rest everything will remain same okay and there's a reason for that let me tell you that as well why i'm saying this because this amazon linux ami has one uh, i mean software pre installed which is called aws cli i'm going to cover this in our later videos as well but just understand that amazon linux ami i mean comes with uh, this uh, aws cli software package pre installed okay and that is required for you to run any aws is cli commands okay because here i am i'm uh, i mean i'm going to run some aws cli commands to run aws cli command you should have aws cli package installed on your machine so to just to save that effort i'm using amazon linux ami because uh, this ami already has that package okay so if i if i run aws here hit enter you can see i don't get the error okay i get the error to choose the right command and and, and i can and i can check the version also aws space hyphen hyphen version so this means that aws cli is already installed on this machine okay so i mean i'm going to cover this aws cli in, in in later videos in in much more detail but just understand i mean for, for this particular demo try to use amazon linux ami all right so i'm i'm logged into this machine and uh, there's a command which you can use to list all the buckets in the aws account you can use aws space s3 space ls ls stands for list so what i want to do i want to list out all the s3 buckets in this aws account from this ec2 instance so if i run this command right now you will see i get the error unable to locate credentials you can configure credentials by running aws configure okay so there are two ways by which i can give this instance access to s3 buckets either i can uh, i mean use the user credentials so there's a way to create access keys for an iam user okay i mean i'm going to show it to you in some other video but here i just want to cover the concept of roles okay but the other way is to use iam roles and iam role is actually the better option here okay 
we should never try to store your credentials in EC2 instances. This is one of the most insecure way of, you know, I mean, giving this instance access to any service in S3. Because when you do that, the I mean, credentials are stored in plain text format and anyone can copy it. I mean, whosoever has access can copy the, uh, those and uh, I mean, copy it you know, uh, somewhere else also and, and use that same user access anywhere. So it is always a better option to use EC2 roles. Okay. I mean, when you want this instance to interact with any services in AWS account. Okay. So here you see right now I'm getting this error because I don't have any roles attached to this EC2 instance. So I'm getting this error, unable to locate credentials. You can configure credentials by running AWS configure, but I'm not going to run this AWS configure command. I'm just going to attach one role to this instance. And then I'm, I'm going to see if that role works or not. Okay, so let's go back to our AWS management console and let's go back to EC2 instances. And then just uh, click on this instance from here, choose the instance, then go to actions, then go to security, then go to modify IAM role. As you can see, uh, it gave me the option to use a role. Okay, so this role I just created. Okay, I, I created this role, EC2 SC role, and now I get the option to add uh, attach this role to the instance. Just remember, uh, and I mean, uh, one EC2 instance can only be attached with one IAM role at a time. Okay, so I'm attaching this EC2 S3 role to this EC2 instance now. So I'll just click, I'll just, uh, uh, just choose the name of the role from here and just click on update IAM role. The role has been attached. Okay, now I'll head back to the CLI and I'll try to run the command again. AWS S3 LS, which is used to list out all the S3 buckets in an AWS account. And you can see I get the name of the bucket. Now, I don't get the error. So this is the way by which you use roles. So in this way, this EC2 service used this IAM role to interact with S3 service. Okay, now well, so let's just do another uh, demo here. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to create one more bucket here. Okay, so I'll do create bucket and let's just name it as tech bucket and let's just uh, type any random number 0987 okay so i'm trying to create one more bucket here i'll just hit create bucket so now this aws account has two buckets right this aws account has two buckets now now if i just head back to my cli screen and run the same command i should see two buckets now that means this access is working as ex uh, as, as uh, expected and you can see i i'm able to list out the other bucket as well Okay, so in this way, what I'm doing, I'm using EC2 service with an IAM role to interact with EC2, uh, sorry, uh, to interact with S3 service. Okay, now let's try to upload some object to this S3 bucket, one of the S3 buckets. So if I um, uh, just go back to this and if I just uh, 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 click on this name, name of the bucket, you can see there are no objects inside this bucket, which means uh, there's no data inside this S3 bucket right now. Okay. Now let's try to upload some objects from EC2 to this S3 bucket. For that, I'm going to create a test file. So let's just use echo command echo test data. And I'm going to I mean, print this to a file called test data dot txt. So now I have the file. And I can, if I, if I get the contents, I can see the file is there. Now to copy this file to this S3 bucket, I have to use another AWS CLI command, which is AWS space CP space, sorry, AWS S3 space CP for copy. And then the path to the file that I want to copy, which is test data dot txt and where i want to copy to s3 bucket and this is the way you specify your uh, s3 bucket so s3 then colon then double forward slash and then the name of the bucket so i want to use the this bucket 
and then just hit enter. So you, I mean, you, you get this message: upload test data dot txt to S3 this bucket. Now, if I head back to my AWS Management Console and see the objects within this bucket, if I just hit refresh, I will see that same file here. Okay. And now, if I try to download the file, download this file on desktop, and if I open the file, I will see the same text: test data. Okay. Remember, get test data dot txt. It has the text as a test data and it also has the test uh, the text as test data so this is the way you use an ec2 service to upload files to an storage service called s3 within aws using an iam role okay so once again if you have any doubts related to iam role okay just ignore this part for now unable to locate credentials you can configure credentials by running aws configure i am going to cover this in a separate video but here i just wanted to give you the the demo to see how an IAM role works with two services in an I, in an AWS account. So this is the way you use an IAM role. Okay, I hope the concept is clear. And if you have any doubts, uh, just reach out to me. Okay, I'm going to answer all your queries. All right, guys, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please hit that like button to, to support my work. Please share this video with others and subscribe to my channel. All right, guys, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.